To thee we come, O Lord our God. participate in this holy sacrifice and now let us all make an examination of our consciences and now let us recite together the second act of confession I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned and thought, word and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. For your penance for the next three nights, besides having your evening prayers of our Father Hail Mary and Glory Be, to take one of the three readings and not only to reflect upon, but also to offer God a prayer that he might grant you wisdom and insight into his word. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O oh God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Two things I ask of you, deny them not to me before I die. Put falsehood and lying far from me, giving me neither poverty nor riches. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to who God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Heavenly Father, we do not presume to come to your table, but we are here at the invitation of your Son. Remove our sin and clothe us in the garment of righteousness that we may be worthy of the feast with all your chosen ones. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please proclaim the word. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy rich food and pure choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. The gradual. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of food and drink, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Blessed is the one who will die in the kingdom of God. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accordance with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Josh. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Many will come from the east and the west and will recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus, again, in reply, spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fatted cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, the rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready. But those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out therefore into the main roads, and invite to the feast whoever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man that there not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? Then, but then, he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind his hands and feet, and cast him into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. These words are taken from the gospel according to St. Matthew. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, I had an opportunity last weekend to go to a wonderful wedding 
and a reception that took place afterward. There was a lot of laughter, reuniting people who have come and came from many distances. The food was great. And people danced. Now, to understand the insight into our Lord and Savior, he said the kingdom of God is like a wedding feast. There will be abundance of food and drink. There will be dancing and laughter. Jesus wanted to give hope to the poor people of his day. And in the times of Jesus, a wedding feast was a big deal. They did not have in many of the feasts that took place during a wedding in the large cities, but rather in the villages and the hamlets where everybody knew everybody. And they were all invited to the wedding feast. To people who lived in poverty, a wedding feast was an opportunity to get away from their troubles. And so Jesus described the kingdom of God in many ways. And in Christian terminology, our Lord and Savior calls each of us to partake at the table of the Lord his body and his blood. He tells us through the gospel that God and his kingdom is awaiting each and every single one of us. Many are called, but few are chosen. If we look into today's gospel, we read that there were servants that were sent out. In my understanding, the servants would be the prophets. And in many, many cases, the prophets were killed. Who killed them? In Christian terminology, they would be the chief priests and the elders of their times. God, in his divine providence, has given so much for us. That's why when possible, every single Monday, unless there is a solemnity, we have a Mass of Thanksgiving. To thank God for the blessings that has been bestowed upon us. Today, we also celebrate in our church, Heritage, Heritage Sunday. Heritage is basically that which is inherited. We have so many things to be thankful for in our different levels of heritage. First of all, that God chose us as his chosen people through Jesus Christ who offered himself upon the cross for our sins, to bring light to darkness, and to promise each and every single one of us who are faithful unto him the gift of eternal life. So many things we are grateful for. We are also grateful that we have this church to come and worship. The heritage of that which was given, inherited, comes from the people whose names are inscribed on our stained glass windows. When people ask me about the church, I say, you know, it was a very special time. It was a time that in the early 20s, people of Polish ancestry came together. In the first Mass, we celebrate 
on August 25th, 1929. It didn't place, take place here. It took place at what was known as the Redmond's Lodge. The people who came together to form Holy Name of Jesus began construction on this church in the fall of 1929. It was difficult in the way that these people who broke away from St. Stanislaus had a vision. And one of the most remarkable things that I want you to remember is the church in which you come to, the church in which you pray, the church in which you receive the sacraments was built in nine months during the beginning of the Great Depression. That's what we have inherited. The Polish immigrant, immigrants were not rich, but they had a richness in their devotion to God. They had a vision to have a church built upon democracy and centered around the teachings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Polish National Catholic Church had difficulties. Anyone who has read anything about the history realized that it was hell of what our first Prime Bishop Francis Holder had to go against. In his model of truth, work, and struggle, he defined what was to take place not only during his life, but was what was to take place to the early organizers of this church. This coming weekend, or this weekend I should say, there is a celebration of the Eastern Europeans who will gather together and through discussion and food and drink will celebrate their heritage. Surely I thank you for going. I don't know if any of you also traveled, but Shirley had mentioned we put together a presentation board of the first parish committee, of the names that we hold in memory that gave us a heritage as Polish National Catholics. My brothers and sisters, you are all called before the table of the Lord in your devotion and in your seeking righteousness to have a right understanding unto the Lord. You are given all the tools through the teachings of Jesus, which defines you as a Christian people and members of the Polish National Catholic Church. So rejoice in the heritage. Consider that there are many who do not really rely or think about their heritage. It is on this day that we recall our own individual inherited heritage. Whether we are Polish or we are not, but understand that this church was formed by poor Polish immigrants who sought to have righteousness before God. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, during our prayers today, we remember and we recall what is taking place in the Middle East. So much death, so much destruction, and more to come. 
Coming back from Richmond, Virginia, I saw a sign, a poster, that says, Have you met the Lord? I think it at this time, most importantly, because we are standing at a crossroad and God says to us, I'm giving you a choice, life and death. May we pray for the children, especially, whether they be Israeli or Palestinian, there is the presence of the evil one in our world. And if you don't believe it, then take a look of what took place a week ago yesterday. We will pray also for the, the souls of all who lost their lives. And usually it is the innocent ones that suffer the most. So as the people, as disciples of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, through the power of prayer, may we go on to God our Heavenly Father and pray for peace. God bless all of us and God bless the people in the Middle East. I believe in Wahaban God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary. And he came in. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one the holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Please be seated. The Lord freed us from our foes. God's love endures forever.
sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, you have called us to partake of this heavenly feast. Accept our oblations that we offer in memory of your Son. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through his cross and resurrection, he freed us from sin and death and called us to the glory that has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation and a people set apart. Everywhere we proclaim your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. Therefore, we he join this day with the voices of the angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer in the place for, first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. My brothers and sisters, may we pray for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry and the homeless and the unemployed. May we pray for all those who suffer from the coronavirus. May we give thanks to God for the blessings of doctors, nurses, first responders, and health care workers. May we pray this day for all abused and neglected children, as well as all abused and neglected animals. May we give God our thanks for the blessings of all those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad. Dear Lord, may we pray this day for peace, not only in the Middle East, but also in Ukraine. And pray that the wisdom of the Holy Spirit may touch those for whom you have created. And Father, may we also remember all here who are present, their loved ones, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, or who offer up to you this sacrifice of praise, 
for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people, through Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering, and make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them, he instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in memory of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, and Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and join and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we, who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar, may be filled with every blessing and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants and handmaidens who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant we pray a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord, amen. 
and grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following the divine example, we say with confidence, secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and vouchsafe to grant it peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you. Who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not because for our judgment or condemnation, though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving Master, 
Awaken in all of us living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, for those of you who will not or cannot receive the, um, the Blessed Sacrament, let us offer an act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart at this time and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. We will take the heavenly bread and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord with high praise. Will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord,
You gave your people food of angels, and without their toil you supplied them from heaven with bread ready to eat, providing every pleasure and suited to every taste. The Lord be with you. O Lord our God, you gave us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Fulfill the pledge you made to us that we may be glad and rejoice in our salvation. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the unity of the Holy Spirit in our one God forever and ever. Sacrifices are offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and for all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word. <coughs> the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present with God in the beginning. Through Him, all things came into being, and apart from him, nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found the life. Life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe. But only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made. Yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him be empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten, not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love.
and other regions around the world, and for the repose of the souls of our late departed brothers and sisters, our first Prime Bishop Francis Hoder, the early organizers of Holy Name of Jesus, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.